Hello and welcome to another tutorial. It's been a while since I've done one. Uh, so here I am doing another one. I've had a lot of requests via Facebook, uh, YouTube comments, etc, etc, to do a few. So I have a, created a little list of tutorials that I'm hoping to release in the near future. And this is going to be the first one because I find it to be probably one of the most important. And it's about stereo busing. If you're not sure what stereo busing is, you've come to the right place. Basically, stereo busing refers to the number of signals being routed together so that they can be adjusted or they have effects applied to them as a group. Why is stereo busing important? Instead of putting a reverb on each, the bass channel and the piano track and the chords track, you will put them on one channel and then send the bass, piano, and the chords to that track. And then the bus or the reverb will send both the dry signal mixed with the wet signal out to the master. This is important because rather than running three different reverb plugins on each track, you're only running one and this saves a lot of CPU power. This also, for reverb especially, creates one space rather than three different spaces. You put reverb on something or you give something reverb to create space, give it space within a mix, correct? Well, if you're putting a separate reverb on the bass, a separate reverb on the piano, and a separate reverb on the chords, and then you have different settings for each, you're creating different spaces within one mix, and that, that really doesn't make sense. So for example, to put this into a visual perspective, let's say you have one bedroom, a big bedroom, and you build a small bedroom inside of it, and then you build another bedroom inside of it, and then you build another bedroom inside of it. So you have three bedrooms inside of one bedroom. It, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. And to be honest, it can ruin a track. So let's get down to business. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that everything you need bust is linked to your, a mixer track or has its own mixer track. Uh, ignore this reverb here, here, and this loop bus uh, for a minute. I'll get back to them in a second. So after you've got everything routed to your mixer track, you're gonna to wanna to go over to your sends. And here I have slapped a reverb on here. And I tweaked a few of the settings to give it a little, make it a little more dra drama dramatic, excuse me. One of the most important things is, and this is something I messed up on when I first started doing this, was I would have the dry all the way up. And I could not figure out why my reverb or my, my signal or my chords or whatever I was bussing was so loud and why it was causing phasing issues. Well, that was because I had this dry all the way up. So make sure that you have your dry all the way down and your wet all the way up to 100%. After that, we're going to go over to the thing that you need bust or you want to send or apply an effect to, and you're going to turn this little knob or up as much as you need. And that's going to give it the reverb or whatever effect you have on here. So if we give this a listen here, I'm going to solo the chords, you will be able to hear the reverb. And this knob here decides how much of your signal is being sent through this reverb. Now that we have a reverb set and our preset set, we've created that space I was talking about. We've created that one space, that room that we need. So now what we're going to do is we're going to send the piano to this reverb. We're going to give the piano a little bit of reverb. And if we wanted to, we could send the bass. And we could send the, the loop over here but we're not going to, and we're not going to send the bass either. So now that we have the piano and the chords running through one reverb, instead of having two reverbs on both tracks, we save, we're saving CPU power, and we're, we're, we're utilizing that space, that one space that we need. Now, we, want, we also, let's say we want to put a delay on our reverb, or a delay on our chords and our piano. Well, we just create another, another aux or another bus. And we click our chords here, and we decide how much we want, how much delay we want. Okay, so now we're going to have some reverb, and we're going to have delay.
and the the delay doesn't really fit the rhythm, but for the sake of this tutorial. And let's say we want to give the piano a little bit of re a delay. Send the delay, send the piano to the delay too. <clears throat> and if we wanted to create another one, another bus, we just so on and so forth. If you're an FL Studio user, uh, you do not have to use, you're not limited to these four sends. Any track can be utilized as a bus, as I have here. I'm going to actually name this reverb bus so it's actually can, you can see it. So we have a reverb. I just have the same preset on this reverb as I do on the one over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to send the chords to this bus. And we're going to send the piano to this bus. And if we give it a listen here. Okay, oh, I forgot these are muted here. So we have the chords there that have reverb. And we also have the reverb for the piano. Okay, remember it's running through this bus and not the, this bus over here. What I forgot to mention over here is we can, now we can put reverb or uh, EQ on that reverb. So now we can EQ the reverb. So now we just have a really high, a really high passed. Uh, EQ curve, and we could put, a, say, a, a distortion on it if we wanted to, to distort the reverb. Now, keep in mind that any effects you put on the bus, you're only affecting the the bus effect. So, if you have a reverb on here, you're only affecting that reverb. You're not affecting the actual input signal. If you want to affect that, you have to make sure you go over to the actual effect. Another useful thing for bussing is sending drum loops or uh, cymbals, hi-hats, snares, et cetera, et cetera. Like, let's say you have a snare layer, or in this, in this case, we have a loop layer. And I'll play those two loops together. Here they are separate. So now we want to combine these two loops together and then we can EQ them, we can run them through filters, we can apply any effect we want to them. Now this is a little bit different uh, than sending say a reverb or a delay. For here we want to send just the signal to this track only. So we're going to click route to this track only and notice how it got rid of the track sending this to the master because if we didn't click route to this track only you we would be sending this loop to the loop bus and we would be sending it to the master thus doubling the signal and it would create phasing issues and it would double your amplitude and it's just a big unwanted mess so notice here down here how we have this is the send amount we're gonna we just want to send this to the loop bus and there we go then it unlinks it to the master and the loop bus is being sent to the master. Okay, so now when we play this, we're gonna hear signal. Both of these loops are gonna come out of this loop bus. Mute the first one. And here's the second one. And then combine. So now, if we wanted to, we can add compression to this loop. We can add EQ. It's not being applied. We can add EQ to these buses, etc., etc., and treat them basically as one signal. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. I believe I've covered everything I've wanted to and hope to. So I hope that you have learned something from this tutorial. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, please feel free to tweet them at me, uh, send me a message on Facebook, leave a YouTube comment. Send me a message on, on YouTube. Uh, if you have questions about music in general, uh, I'm more than happy to assist you. Just leave a comment. Uh, send me a message. Uh, I love relaying the information I've learned to you guys. And this was one of the main things that I learned a few months ago. It was one of the most game-changing things that I have learned in quite some time about music production. It, it really changed the way I, I go about my music now and the way it even sounds. I've noticed a huge change in and how my 
my music sounds and how my mixes sound. They sound much cleaner. My computer isn't working as, as hard. So I hope that you have learned something from this. Uh, again, if you have any questions, leave a comment, send me a message, etc., etc. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful rest of the day, evening, afternoon. Thanks for watching.